Hello everyone, it's your Deadliest Investment here with something a bit different because this, unless you're here because you search for an X Wing tutorial, you won't have a clue what this is. And that's a real shame in my opinion because this is a great game that not enough people know about and more people need to know about it because X Wing is a great miniatures game. And yeah, people should people should know about it, in my opinion. So here's a quick tutorial for new players and just anyone who's interested um, on the basics of the game. So I'm going to set up a quick game versus AI. Uh, this will be quite similar to what you get in the standard core set of the game. Um, so I am just going to fly two basic x-wings with obviously the openable and closable x-foils uh, and that's going to put me at 76 points every ship and different pilots you can see here has a points value it's just how the game's balanced um, both on the actual miniatures game and on the computer I did not mean to click random so that will have spawned a full 200 point list for me to fly against which Oh, well, this is off to a great start already, isn't it? I'm not going to stand a chance against that with two X-Wings. So that's just immediately exit the main menu. Sorry about that. Uh, wasted a few seconds there, but you get to see these nice arts on the loading screen of Fly Casual, which is the, the application I'm using. It's um, free for anyone who's interested. Just Google Fly Casual online. You can download it for free. Um... It's not perfect, it does have bugs now and then, but for a free product, it's really good. Uh, it's a great way to get into the miniatures game or to play by yourself offline during COVID. Okay, so I was at 76 points with two X-Wings, and we're going to spawn him flying against three TIE Fighters to make it 76, 75. So it's a pretty even game. So the way this game works, as a brief explanation, is... You have what would be a 3 foot by 3 foot play mat or board. Um, players take turns setting up obstacles at the start of the game. And then you can play in a smaller area or bigger area if it suits your needs. This is just tournament standard technically. Um, and then you have these ships which uh, you place on the board. And then they have different ways of moving and shooting. And you use that to effectively try and beat your opponent. Uh, they are all 3D models, so some of these these computer rendered ones are quite accurate to the real thing. Uh, the actual real X-Wing you'd get would be red in the core set. Um, so let me go over your stats real quick. So the actual cards in the real game are all quite what should pop up here. Um, unfortunately I can't move my cursor off the name, but um, those values at least are represented here, the ones at the bottom of the card. And what they stand for is this red value is your attack dice, so how many attack dice you roll as per standard. Green is defense dice. Uh, yellow and blue are hull and um, shields. They're basically combined to be health, they're just slightly different. So if you notice, the X Wings have three attack die, two is quite agility, but uh, defense dice, four hull and two shields, whereas the TIE fighters each get two attack die, three agility, three, he three hull or three health, and no shields. Um, the orange number, uh, lowest number moves first and shoots last, that's like your pilot skill or your initiative. Um, the higher the number, typically the better the pilot, Anakin's a six, Han Solo's a six, Poe Dameron's a six. Um, they got people like Luke Skywalker's a 5, um, Rey's a 5, Obi-Wan Kenobi's a 5, so, and then you've got on the lower end of the spectrum, Ahsoka Tano's a 3, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of one from each, like, era, um, Ahsoka Tano's a 3, who else is a, I think Big Starkweiser in the X-Wing is a 3, possibly a four and then I honestly don't play that much 
Resistance or First Order, personally. Um, who exists? Why can't uh, Rose Tyco is a two, I think, in a little shuttle, for example. I might be slightly off. So in the actual game, you'll have dials which you have to twist to assign your maneuver. In fly casual, that's represented here. So effectively, you'll pick a maneuver, and then that a corresponding movement template will be placed in front of your ship. Your ship will move along and do something to match the template. So I selected a hard two to the right here and a free straight. I'm going to click next and it's going to assign the, these ships there, dials. These here are what the backs of the dials look like in real life for anyone who doesn't have a real life game. Um, I'm just going to from now on explain it in fly casual and you should be able to put everything across to the real life game with a fair amount of ease. So I'm going to keep my S-Foils open which is an optional event on my S-Foils card. As you see there before you activate you may flip this card. Uh, but I don't want to. So he's going to do a free straight. And then you get, I need to turn that down, the option of three actions which are represented on the right hand side of your pilot card. Focus is kind of like an all round action, helps on both attack and defense. But if you don't use it your turn, it goes away at the end. Target lock only benefits your attack, unless you have upgrades or something that say otherwise. Um, we, there's no upgrades in this game though, other than the yes, S-Foils themselves. Uh, so yeah, only benefits attack, but it stays between rounds. So even if your turn ends and you don't spend it, that's fine. Uh, barrel roll, you can just use to kind of move yourself sideways. Uh, I'll show you that here. So barrel roll you can use to add a one straight template. And then you can move either centre yourself, move yourself slightly forward or slightly backwards. So I'm going to go slightly backwards. You see like that? There. And then there's cute little animations. Uh, although I can't turn down the volume mid-game apparently. Uh, so they've all moved. They executed their manoeuvres just off screen and took their actions. This is the maximum distance you can engage at. So none of my ships have a shot this turn so you can skip to the end like I said focuses and all green tokens get removed if I had a target lock it would have stayed um, because I showed you the barrel I'm in a bad position here so I'm going to actually waste a couple turns um, just trying to get my ships to where they need to be on the bright side I do believe at one of these oh no none of them flew through the rock I was thinking they had a chance of flying through the rock there it didn't happen I didn't get that lucky if they had they'd have to roll an attack die and on a hit or a crit they'd have to take a hit or a crit um, so he's going to do that so what you're seeing here is I'm about to execute a red manoeuvre what that means is after I execute that maneuver, I understand this is a lot of information by the way. Um, it's just I explain it all now and then I'll be able to just play and you can see it in action a lot more fluent, fluidly, fluently. So anyway, I did a red maneuver which basically turned me around to be facing where I come from. You see it's a special little symbol, it's called a talon roll. And that'll give me a stress token, which means while stressed, you can't perform actions, so I can't get a focus, a target lock, or do a barrel roll, unlike this one. And you also can't perform any more red maneuvers. Now when you see my dial again, you'll see there are some blue maneuvers, and in order to remove stress, I have to um, execute that blue maneuver. So the dice got rolled automatically here, and wasn't really in my favour. I'm not quite sure if I have a shot on this TIE Fighter. Uh, obviously they get to shoot first because they're F initiative 3, I'm at initiative 2. Uh, so I'm going to spare my focus just to lose one shield. Because um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a chance to use it on attack. And I completely evaded that one. So, two things to mention here, because you'll be confused I'm sure, uh, about how many dice are rolled. Um, 
I'm not actually sure how many this rolled, but the reason I'm rolling three green dice here when my value is only two is because I'm a two agility ship, but because it's such a long range attack, it benefits the defender and the defender gets an extra def defense die. If it's a very close range attack, it benefits the attacker and the attacker gets an extra attack die. Um, so, for example, if the attack's within range one, um, it's extra attack die. If it's range two, no change. If it's range three, uh, extra defense die. Do I have a shot back? I do have a shot back here, so it might have been worth me saving that focus. It would have been. If I'd have had a focus, that would have been changed all these eyeball results to hit results. But unfortunately, I just get the one, and they evade it with relative ease. Uh, I do have another shot here though, but again, I don't have any tokens to modify my attack with. Uh, kind of a standard roll, somewhat lucky, but they're going to spend their focus and make that two evades. So, um, yeah, the Empire came out on top of that round. So now I want to clear my stress, so I'm just going to do a one straight. I'm not flying this amazing, by the way. I'm just I want to show you things as I fly. I could fly this. I could have flown this a lot better, but I've wanted to show you bow rolls and red maneuvers so I can get it out of the way. And now I'm showing you clearing stress. So I do a blue maneuver. The red token goes away. I can form an action again. And I'm just going to focus because I would target lock, but you can only target lock to target lock. In fact, I'll show you this one, because this one can target lock. So to target lock, you have to actually select a ship within range 3 of you. And I wasn't sure if this ship here was within range 3, so I would have failed the action if I'd have attempted it. And now the target lock's only actually in effect when I attack this ship. So if I attack this ship or this one, it wouldn't be in effect. So to quickly explain what happened to you there, while well, the TIE Fighters moved, this one here moved over a rock. And as a result, or an asteroid to be technically correct, as a result they had to roll a dice, they landed on a crit, which means they suffered a critical hit, uh, which has given them this effect, and that acts as one damage with this bonus negative effect, um, which is represented by that little crit token there. So if they don't go straight next turn, that shit's taking a damage basically, and they're getting right on with attacking. now. I could focus it to take no damage, but I'm not going to, because I feel like I'm going to get more use out of my focus on my attack. So I'm just going to let myself take the shield, and hope that the focus is more use down the line. It's very much, it's a turn-based strategy game with bits of luck thrown in there, in the dice rolls, but it's... It's a game I really like. I play it competitively. I don't always do well competitively. Um, but I have a lot of fun with it, with small games at home as well. So now they've all attacked. Both my ships have lost their shields. I'm not in a great position. But I get to attack here, firstly. Now, to explain to you what the target lock does so a focus will change all eye results, focus results to a hit on attack or an evade on defense. Target lock, you get to select as many dice as you want on attack and re-roll them. I'm not going to waste the lock this turn, because it's only 50-50 whether it'll come up as something useful or not, because there's two blanks, two focus results, which I can't do anything with, then three hits and a crit. So it's 50-50, I'm not going to take that chance, I'd rather save it for later turns when it would have potential to do more. I've got a pretty good roll, so I'm just going to see what they get. And as a result, they get nothing that ship's dead in one turn. They take the two damage, then they suffer the crit for the extra effect, and they've blown up because they only had three health. Uh, they didn't have a focus token or anything they could spend. I'm going to attack this ship with this X Wing now. Uh, I'm going to spend the focus for two hits and a crit. I might be able to get another ship off the board here. No. So they, so you always cancel hits before crits, so they rolled one natural evade to cancel one hit. They rolled a focus result, which they spent a focus token on to change it to another evade, and then they still suffer the crit, which has this effect. 
So by increased difficulty, it means the colours on the dial change, so a blue would go to a white, and a white would go to a red, which would cause stress. Um, I moved before them, unfortunately. But they both have crits, so I know that this one has to go straight, unless it, um, unless it wants to take a damage. And I know this one can't do a hard turn, or it'll get stressed. I mean, it can still do the hard turn, but this is these are what I mean by hard turns, by the way, like the sharp 90 degree turns. These are 45 degrees, and then this is a straight line. Um, so I'm going to dial in those two. Even though I'm not stressed, I'm going to do the blue maneuver, just because it's the template I want to use. Uh, let's go here first. And I'm going to I'm going to target lock because I feel like there's a chance that ship's going to bump into me, and if that happens, we can't attack each other. So a focus wouldn't be all that useful. But a target lock means I can save it for another turn. And you're going to do a thing. Oh, he did choose to. So that's interesting. So um, he did choose to do a hard maneuver, which means he took the stress. I completely blank out there. So I am about to take a crit, but also just to talk about this other one here, um, you'll have noticed this card says as an action they can repair that card, but because they bumped into me and didn't fully execute their maneuver, they don't get to form an action, which means next turn, again, they're going to have to go in a straight line unless they want to take a damage. I, however, am about to take a crit. You cannot form any actions except the focus action and actions from damage cards. That's not that bad. Uh, I can live with that quite happily. Um, I'm going to go for that one just because I feel like that one might be long range, whereas this one might be range too. Oh, that's a nice roll. And that's another ship tabled. Another ship tabled? That doesn't make sense. Tabled being tabled means something completely different. Uh, the crit effect popped up but I'm not bothered because that ship's dead this turn. I now however don't have anyone I can attack, that ship's already dead and it's touching me. So I'm going to skip to the end of this turn. And there we go. Um, so interesting now, this, what I did here and went for and turned round, they can't do that because they're stressed. So which means they're probably going to try and clear that stress. So I'm going to try and assume they're going to end up here somewhere doing a two straight or a two bank. So I'm going to do a one bank to try and cut them off and make them bump into me. And then this one is going to do a 4k turn to try and get a shot at them. So I'm hoping to move, bump them so they don't get an action and then I'll get a shot at them with my other ship. It might not work, we'll see what happens. So it's there, I'm going to focus. Oh no. Okay, so I've landed on a rock and suffered a crit. So, before I see the effect of this crit result, landing on an asteroid is very bad. Because it means not only do you have the penalty for taking damage, you also can't perform an attack this turn. Moving through it, you also can't perform an action. Moving through, but that doesn't matter anyway because I'm stressed. Yeah, moving through a asteroid you can still attack but if you land on one no and that's bad all regular damage I now suffer as crits instead of regular damage but I do get the bump so they aren't getting a modified attack into me it's just gonna be whatever they roll which still isn't nice either but I evade it naturally luckily uh, I can't attack here because I'm bumped and I can't attack here because I'm on an asteroid that's the end of this turn. Um, this isn't going to be that interesting. I'm going to bump here, but I don't care because I'm going to clear my stress, and it's roughly a position I'd like to be in. Um, so do a 4k turn there. There we go, 4k turn. What's this stress? Uh, Chris again? Damage engine. Um, Evade. 
can click this on fly casual to see the stats. So I'm very up on crits and slightly up on evades, but I'm down on regular hits. They're up a little bit on hits and crits, but massively down on evades and up on blanks. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, dice are dice, but it's just if you ever feel like you've gotten really unlucky in the game, you can verify that. But luck is a part of the game at the same time, so. But no, I'm getting quite lucky this game. I'm just not flying at peak potential. Um, so, let's move my ships. This one's going to K-turn. This one's just going to go one forwards and focus. Okay, hopefully with any luck, they'll spend their focus on the attack. No, they won't. I can't. Oh, and I'm going to take another crit. Stun pilot after you execute. Oh, that's not that bad. I'm not flying with for any more asteroids. Uh, but now I have two attacks. So hopefully this will be game. Yeah, so they had to spend their evade there to not take a crit. But now I have a range one attack with a focus. And they have no way of modifying their defense die. So no matter what, they're taking a crit, even if they naturally roll three evades here, because they just can't cancel out all four dice. Which they do actually roll three evades, but direct hit, which is a dual damage card, which is game. Um, that's how to play. I'm going to have another quick game just to show you some more of the ships and some different factions um, against the AI. Uh, we went for Rebel and Empire. First Order and Resistance are quite similar because you've again got like, you've got A-Wings and you've got the Falcon and you've got X-Wings um, and then First Order you've got First Order TIE Fighters and First Order Shuttles. You know, they take a lot of influence from Rebel and Empire even though they fly differently in the game and have different pilots. So, I'm going to show you very quickly some Republic Separatist. And to do that, we're going to enlist the help of Anakin Skywalker. Oh, no. Anakin Skywalker against. Oh, no, I clicked random again. Well, this will be a very interesting game because I can't be bothered going back to the main menu. Uh, I'm going to. Give the opponent initiative, which means they get to place the first obstacle, and if we had a tie on pilot skill, they'd go first. So they've got eight ships, I've got my one. This is just going to be a massacre. Because um, <laughs> there's this. I accidentally click random, which builds them a list of 200 points. I'm 41 points. But Anakin has this, which is what I want to show you, which is a fourth point. And. That's all I really wanted to show you. I was just going to do it against two Trade Federation Vulture Droids, but instead we've got eight Scum ships. Um, we're going to go for free bank. So, just to quickly introduce two new things. So, purple thing is a force, that's nothing new. Triad. Let me wait till they've all moved because that'll allow this thing in existence. So Anakin roll in a Naboo Starfighter rolls two attack die, two defense die, has three hull and two shields. He's got a couple new action, well a new action you haven't seen yet, which is boost, which lets you use a one straight or one bank template to move. He also has full throttle, which is after you fully execute a speed three to five maneuver, you may perform an evade action, which you can spend to change any one defense die to an evade result, even if it's blank. And then, before you reveal your move, this is, because he's a named pilot, every named pilot has their own ability, so that's what's above the line, which reads, before you reveal your maneuver, you may spend one force to barrel roll, this is not an action. Uh, I'm not going to be using that, I want to show you force for its generic use. So, um, you want to perform an evade action, always. Um, so I get the free evade token. And I'm going to barrel roll now as my actual action, so not spending the force here. We're going to be out of range this turn. No one gets any shots off. So I'm going to get decimated this turn, but I'm just going to fly in there to show you 
the um, show you hopefully getting to use a force token at some point. So it's going to free straight, get shot at by about eight different guns. Okay, so we're going to do the free straight, get the free evade from full throttle, which is the ship ability, not the pilot ability. And then we are also going to... Uh, we'll target lock. So, I get to attack first. I'm just going to go for the one right in front of me. So, here's what the force can do. First thing I'm going to target lock just the blank. This isn't the most... This isn't probably what I do in a normal game, but it's to the point of this tutorial. Right. So, I've rolled two focus results. I can spend one force token to change just one result. But not both results. Just the one. And then that force token, if you see on Anakin's card when it pops up, has a little... I can't scroll down to it, and can you stop rolling dice for a second? Um, has a little purple triangle next to number one. That means you will cover one of them at the end of every turn. Uh, so I naturally evade that attack. Um, I'll be very surprised if I survive this turn, with the, especially with them rolling like that. Uh, so I might as well just spend it now. I'll spend the evade token to change one blank to an evade. I still take two damage. Um, so while I sit here and die, I hope that covered all of the basics for you. I will be playing more in-depth games in the future. Um, I just wanted to do a quick little tutorial live on stream because this is a game I really enjoy and there's a lot to it. There's probably a hundred different ships. Each one has four to ten, probably more pilots and can stick a number of upgrades on them. And it can have a lot of different mixtures and combinations that make it really interesting and appealing. Obviously this is just a brief if I'm honest, kind of rushed, I could have explained some things better overview of the game, but I do hope you've enjoyed, and if you have any questions about any of it, uh, just leave them in the chat, leave them in the comments if you're watching it on YouTube, and I'll try and address it in the next video. But um, if there's anyone actually live, I can't check right now. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Uh, goodbye.